Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick overview of my FMS FCX24 Power Wagon 6x6. <clears throat> I um, had the idea to do a 6x6 micro crawler like a year ago when I saw this really cool um, real size 6x6 by Hawk designs um, they call it the wrecker and um, it's this really cool rat rotted out six by six power wagon <clears throat> and I thought it'd be really cool to make one of those in you know micro scale and I'd started that with the SCX 24 and doing a lots of fabrication but then I kind of didn't really like the bodies like and bodies that were available and I just never finished it out and then when the FCX was released, I saw the hard body power wagon and I was like, that's my body. I'm going to build this. So I took a stock out of the box as it comes, FCX 24 from FMS and um, with a mostly by adding parts from the FMS Atlas 6x6 and some customization for uh, some FCX parts. I was able to create this guy. You can see we did some cool weathering here on the body. This is to look like the actual truck in real life. Um, and, uh, you know, it's some different, like, the doors have been rusted differently, that sort of thing. This was originally a yellow one. You can even see kind of chipped a little bit of the yellow um, in a couple places so you can see the paint underneath but I think it still looks fine like it kind of matches the the weathering okay <clears throat> um, I did this little platform here across the back rails that's just a piece of um, polystyrene that I cut and painted I did all this weathering with this um, right here sophisticated finishes iron metallic surfacer so you brush this on it goes on gray kind of yeah you can see it's like a dark gray color and then there's another bottle that you after that's dried you put this antiquing solution on top and this is just like a translucent blue liquid you put that on there and the, the the iron filings in that base coat rust and you get this cool aged look you do a, you know a few different coats and you can you know kind of make it look however you want it to look and then like this I painted silver and then did a little salt treatment um, so water table salt let it dry spray the orange over top rub the salt off and then a matte coat I kinda did the same thing over here but less with the salt and more of just silver and then I did the orange on just the door and um, and I kinda smudged it off so it kinda just a little bit different look um, and so you know I think you get really nice weathering it's not the most durable but that's okay um, I'm running these uh, Endura brass wheels. Uh, they do have a slight offset, so they'll clear the portals. Um, I want to say it's like plus three millimeters or something. Um, I'm only running the weighted rings in the front. I took out the weighted rings in the rear, so it's just the brass uh, bead locks themselves. Um, part of the reason I did that is because I'm still running the stock motor and six super heavy brass wheels with brass rings um, it just kind of struggled first gear the low speed didn't really have any problems but in high speed it basically you could only cruise along on a flat surface and you hit the least little bit of obstacle and it would just kind of die um, I also have this winch I think that's from WPL I'd had that in my parts bin for a while it's for like one of their slightly bigger trucks but I think it makes for a pretty cool addition here on the back um, where you would be where you would have like a really big beefy winch for hauling something um, 
the real truck has a boom here and the winch comes up through it i would like to fabricate that someday but um i'm not really the best at these like custom fabrications of body parts so i'm kind of holding off on that right now and i'll probably come back to it i switched to these uh power hobby trail warrior tires recently and man oh man if you got six of these guys pulling it, it, it'll it it'll go <laughs> basically if you can get the tires on it this baby will go over it especially when you like so much clearance from the portals on the um, FCX platform uh, it's kind of cheating this thing it's so much more uh, capable than any of my other rigs um, so I'll take the body off um, you can see how I kept the mount going. I, I trimmed off the actual fenders and running boards to make room for the, the bigger tires and also to match the, the body of the truck I was trying to mimic. But I did leave the internals so we still have the nice like snap on and off easy uh, removal. And then I smoked the, uh, the windshield, gave it a bit of a tint because the, I just don't really see any room for... Um, an interior maybe now that I've cleaned up the wiring and repositioned the battery I could fit something but for now it's just gonna be uh, tinted so you can't see the electronics <clears throat> you can see here this is all stock transmission stock motor I did swap out the servos um, <clears throat> because I wanted to run I'm running uh, my fly sky gt5 and this is a micro receiver um for the gt5 i think it's like 12 dollars off of amazon and i wanted to do that so i could get some extra controls for the winch because the fourth channel yeah the fourth channel on the um stock radio setup just didn't really you know it's like have to like hold the button and then release and hold and it just it was a pain whereas here I can just flip this forward and back to turn the, the rear winch on and off <clears throat> and so then I had a, a Tegu main board just sitting in the cabinet over there so I just swapped that in and that way I can just run the micro receiver my Tegu a stock battery that I changed the connector on to make it work and then because we're not running the stock receiver um, the stock servos wouldn't really work anymore because the connectors, I didn't want to go through changing connectors and I had two Emaxes in the cabinet so I just threw an Emax on the front and an Emax on the shifter. It's probably a little bit overkill for the shifting but it's what I had, it does the job, it's cheap. Um, the way that I made this thing into 6x6 six six is probably what people are the most interested in and if you look right here you can see this from here back is actually the back portion of an Atlas frame rail and I just chopped it to fit um, kind of in line with the curvature of the stock plastic frame and, and, it, and it slides into the stock plastic shock mounts. See it lines up there and I just trimmed one side off so that this could slide in and then I just ran a screw through um, through the frame rail into the old stock one on both sides and then the shock mount actually threads into the old shock mount through the new one on the Atlas frame so it kind of ties it all together uh, you can see underneath there can't really see but I wound up chopping off a chunk of the stock frame and then this just slides up to it servo is just mounted on this platform that I made there there's a and uh, rather than run the stock uh, winch controller that was kind of big and bulky and took up a lot of space I bought like a five dollar continuous micro server micro servo and I pulled the controller out of it and so this is just the main board out of a continuous rotation servo soldered on a connector plug that into this winch and now we have forward and back just on the switch here I can maybe show that off um, so flip the switch back extends stop flip it forward pull it back in 
Um, and then my, my shifting is here on channel three and then normal. Um, anyway, so back to how we made this thing into a six by six. So that's how I made the chassis rails, got the frame set up and then we need a drive train. So when I got my FMS parts, these rails, I also ordered, uh, the link kit from FMS, um, for the Atlas, these uh, support cross braces or uh, link mounts and the cross brace in here for the Atlas. And I put that all together and I just run the Atlas links. Uh, I think this is actually an SCX24 drive shaft that just happened to be the right length that I had. Um, and it all just kind of bolts up. The one really neat thing I had to do was actually create the pass through axle. So. The way that works is I took a standard FCX 24 rear axle, I actually took two of them, pulled them all apart, and there's two pieces of that housing, you know, the f like this front piece and this rear piece. And so I pulled off the rear piece and then I took another axle housing and I took just the chunk that has the uh, driveline pass through. And um, basically, you just have to shave off a little bit of a lip that runs inside of here where, it, where they engage together. And then I can just push them together. And then I took the uh, pinion gear out of another rear end and put that here. So it's running, um, let me think about that. So we have the drive shaft comes in, hits the one pinion gear, turns the ring. Rings actually on this side, turns the ring gear, and then that then turns the other um, pinion, which becomes our output shaft. It's important to note that that gear is now rotating the opposite direction, and so that would spin this rear axle um, in the wrong direction. But that was a pretty easy solution. All I had to do was pop the, the rear cover move the ring gear to the other side and install the rear cover upside down. You do have to trim off some little tabs here so that it'll work, but it all goes back together and you have this really nice six wheel, three axle drivetrain, lots of good flex all around. Each, each wheel, each axle can flex independently. Um, it's really cool to watch this baby work on rough terrain. It just like looks like a centipede crawling across the ground. I'm super happy with it. I'm running the suspension all at full droop. I do that on all my micro crawlers. I just find that it makes them a lot more stable and a lot more planted. Um, so yeah, if you hit a bump, it will lift up the whole body. But if you go over a small thing or over a hole, it'll just drop down. And so it just, the trucks just, in my opinion, on these micro crawlers, they just feel so much more stable to run full droop or maybe at most, you know, you know, 90% sag kind of thing. Um, and then the last thing that I did is this guy here, this is a custom brass uh, steering links. I need to paint this so I can get not be a member of the White Servo Horn Club, but just haven't really um, put the effort into it. So all I did here is I bought some brass tubing that the um, stock link would slide inside of. And so I cut the links in half, um, bent, well, cut this uh, brass tubing to the length and kind of gave it a nice little bit of curvature that matches the original shape and then I shoved the old link inside of it and epoxied that in there and um, makes the steering a lot more stiff you know the these stock links are just like super noodly and even if with a better servo it'll barely turn the wheels if you get caught up on something oh I almost forgot I'm running the Treel brass portal covers on the front. I had a set on every wheel, but I decided to take those other four. And you can see I have, I'm building, excuse me, on the Fury Tech chassis back here. So that'll be on another video. And so I'm gonna use those covers over there. But what I did do is I ordered some cheapo 
brass portal portal covers from um, AliExpress. Those add just a few grams, nothing too crazy. The one and I really wouldn't recommend them um, because they also come with brass uh, portal backs, but they don't. The pieces that you get don't go together well. <laughs> These covers will work with the plastic, but they won't work with the brass uh, backs that come in the kit. So, I don't know. I wouldn't buy them again. But they're perfect for here. We get a little bit of weight on the rear axles, but nothing too overkill. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe sometime soon we'll do some running footage or something. Um, and then stay tuned. I'll be building up this guy probably getting that wrapped up sometime this week. I'm just waiting on some more parts in the mail. So yeah, thanks a lot. Bye.